Alrighty. Hi, everyone. I think you should start a little more upbeat. Not hi. Well, maybe we should. Okay. <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> Does that work? Okay. Now you just sound like a cheerleader. Hi. No, that just sounds too creepy. Yeah, you just sound like a creepy clown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to start it. Hello, kids. Hello. No. No. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, so this <laughs> this is Josh Proctor, as always. Uh, this is actually not an episode. We're doing something a little bit different. I think the name that we've settled on for these is called Side B Detours. Mm -hmm. uh, because what we're going to talk about is actually not related to the season topic of community and belonging. But I felt that after Revoice, since before Revoice in the episode that, and by, by the way, Michelle's here with me. Forgot to, <laughs> forgotten to mention that. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, we're a mess today. Oh, we're such a mess. But that's so, okay because this is a detour. This episode. is a detour. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already taken up almost two minutes with just the introduction. <laughs> um Michelle and I, after going to Revoice, I felt that because she had shared a lot of her anticipations about Revoice in the episode that we did on episode three, that it would be good to kind of come back and share a little bit about what we got out of Revoice. Yeah. And some of you might know that Michelle wrote a post on her blog about her experience. Yes, I did. Uh, and so <laughs> some of you may have a general idea if you've read that. If you haven't yet, uh, the link will be in the description for this episode, so go ahead and check it out there. But I wanted to hear from Michelle, so tell us, Michelle, a little bit about your experience. Yes. So, Revoice was crazy. I wasn't necessarily sure of what to expect going into Revoice. Um, I was the random straight girl kind of going and attending and um, didn't really know anybody except for Josh. Um, and a couple other people, but it really, it was just, it was kind of like an eye-opening experience for me. It was, I think, really the one of the biggest takeaways that I got from Revoice was just the sense of community and connection. Um, so it wasn't necessarily like an overall thing that I learned from the workshops or from any of the main sessions, it was really just the whole sense of, of community and belonging. There was just a, a very tangible hunger, I think, in the entire group as a whole. There was like, what, 600 people? I would say about. Uh, I mean, about, I don't know the actual number. Around about 600 people there. And there was just such a tangible hunger for community and that longing of acceptance. And um, so really there was just a a sense of community that you really don't see in in most churches yeah. or even most Christian communities. And so that was really impactful for me. And um, I think the way that I kind of have described it is that I think um, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to be accepted. I was the outsider coming in and I wasn't sure if people would want to open up to me or want to even talk to me because I was the random straight girl. And I was like, I wasn't sure people would be like, what is she even doing here? Um, but really it was just from the very get go, people were very welcoming and accepting of me. And, um, I think that also kind of had to deal with the fact that I came to learn and to understand. And I wasn't like, Hey, I'm the straight person. You should be like me and be straight. Like, no, that wasn't what I was trying to do at all. It was, um, just really wanting to understand and learn. And so, um, I think that was probably my biggest takeaway from Revoice. Okay. Um, just going in through everything. Yeah, I get that. Like, honestly, even for me, um, I like the word that you used in your post about it was like a big family reunion. Yeah. It's really funny because for a lot of us that went last year, it kind of was like a family reunion. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people that I had met since then, like at other events mm -hmm. or things. And it was interesting because I thought that they had been to Revoice. I thought we had mm -hmm. met at Revoice last year. Yeah. And then we would be in the car or something. And I'd be like, hey, what did you guys think of that compared to last year? And they'd be like, we weren't here last year. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. But it, it felt like 
And even the people that we met that day, like that week, Mm -hmm. it was so big of like just feeling this automatic connection of like, we just met you, but why did you crash on our couch? Yeah, Um, exactly. It happened a couple of times. (laughs) It happened. And I love it. And I love it. And you know who, you know, if I'm talking about you, if you're listening, that you crashed on our couch (laughs) and I love you for it. Um, But, and it's really funny because I had three conferences in three weeks. Yes. And Revoice was was in the middle. Yes. Yes. It was really crazy, but it was also very fascinating to compare these three mm-hmm. ones. And every single one had things they did great, things that they're working on, you know, all of that. But it was especially interesting for me to go to the conference after mm-hmm. Revoice because I had gotten so used to like, you just meet people at Revoice and then yeah. you become best friends. Yeah. And then going to the other conference where it was just like, you go into the, you go into the sessions, <laughs> you go into the sessions, you learn, you come out, you find the people that you came with. And you just go eat lunch. Or and you, you go eat lunch with them. You hang out with them. Exactly. Like, yeah. there's no thing of, like, wow, I'm meeting these people. Oh, my gosh, these people, I, I don't want to leave. Like, yeah. we met a few people, but there was nothing of this. And I think it's something about the fact that you go to Revoice and people know why you're there. Yeah. Like, you can't hide it. Right. Either you are gay, lesbian, something, or you're connected to it in some right. way. Yeah. I think, for me, it was, like... <laughs> It kind of surprised me a little bit because just with myself, where I kind of just became extremely extroverted for mm-hmm. five days straight. And like, I mean, there were a couple of times where I was like a little overwhelmed and just needed to like, you know, sit in a quiet space with people that I knew. <laughs> you're also in a house with eight gay men. <laughs> That's true. Nine. Nine. Yes, you're right. Nine. Yes. Um, so that was also fun, which actually like the first night that we were there, everybody started arriving at the house and everybody's giving hugs and they're like, Hey, how are you? And like, you know, that whole reunion thing. And so I'm like standing off to the side and I'm like, I I don't know what to do because (laughs) everybody knows each other and I don't know anybody. And so I remember someone coming up to me and this person knows who they are, but like they came up to me and they're like, just kind of stood there and I'm like, I'm just going to stand back here as the outsider. And he like looks at me and he's like, you're not the outsider. You be- like, you're welcome here. You're one of us. And like gives me a big old hug. And I was like, oh, and I feel like that kind of gave me a little bit of courage to step out on my shell a lot more and just kind of just meet people. And so I don't know. I don't even know how many people I met at Revoice, but it was like every time I turn around, they're like, oh, this person is like this person or Michelle, I want you to introduce you to this person and met so many people. Yeah. But they were great people. Yeah, exactly. Was there anything else that like point came out to you, stood out to Um, you? I think another big thing that really stood out to me was just there were some really good educational parts. I think uh, I got to attend a uh, a workshop called Queer Culture, and so that one was fabulous, and I loved it, and um, it was extremely educational. And so, from an outsider point of view, I think it was really great with um, just talking about the history of the queer culture, and then just the conference in general. I feel like a lot of my feelings and convictions going into the conference and experiencing the conference, they didn't change, but I gained a vocabulary to support those feelings and convictions and stuff when it comes to um, the LGBT world. Mm -hmm. And so that was really fun, just being able to like, okay, now I feel like my voice has more substance a little bit because I have more of a vocabulary to use. Yeah. One of the things that really encouraged me a lot was the number of church leaders and pastors yeah. that were at Revoice. I mm-hmm. think even though it was just a very small number of the church leaders in America, it's still a start. Yeah. And so for me, that was very encouraging. I don't know if that was encouraging to other people, but for me, I was like, okay, I'm not alone in this as a straight person coming in. There's other people here that are trying to learn and understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think that was even for me, it was really impactful. I met a pastor who's from my same denomination. Yeah. And just like the fact that he was one of the first people I met Mm -hmm. at the conference. Yeah. And I feel like that was such a divine moment with like of God kind of giving it like, you see like what I'm doing. Yeah. You see what I'm doing in your church. You see like this man is here to learn, Mm -hmm. you know, and I've always said, you know, for me with people, a person doesn't have to have everything right. A person doesn't have to be like 
agreeing on everything or, right. or know all the knowledge. They just have to be willing to learn. Mm-hmm. If a person is willing to learn, a person is humble enough to say, you know what? I don't know, but I want to know. Yeah. I, I want to learn in some way. I'm like, that's that's the best posture to be in. Right. And so I loved even coming to him. And it was the same encouragement of just saying, like, look at this man who through family connections, like, has has put himself in a place of, of coming here to learn mm-hmm. and and to just to love. Yeah. So that's really good. I'm interested to see, you know, the whole side B movement is definitely in a growing place. Yeah. It's growing and it's expanding. And one of the w- ways that I can tell that is even when, within the last five months, I've been meeting people who are side B. Yeah. But have never been connected to, like, mm-hmm. this whole community. So being able to connect these people and, and see as this whole thing grows – even just with two years of revoice along with the other ministries, like, you know, lead them home and walls down ministry, all the, all of these other ones. It's been interesting to see how that works in people's lives. Yeah. I didn't know like who I was going to run into. I thought that there was going to be a lot of people from the Midwest there because uh-huh. it's, it's in St. Louis. Yeah. But really what surprised me was how many Florida people we yes. ran into. And it was just like, all of a sudden it's like, you hear the word Florida and someone's like, Florida. What? Where are you from? Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, I'm from West Palm. Oh, I'm from Naples. Or like, I'm from Boynton Beach. And it's uh-huh. like, oh, hey, we're only like 40 minutes away from each other. And so that was really cool just to see like the number of people that were from our state. Yeah. And it's like, and now friends on Facebook. And it's like they posted, someone posted something the other day or this morning about how hot and humid it was. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, yes, it's on, on this coast. It's the same thing. It's so mm-hmm. hot. Um, just because today was the first day of summer and it was just insanely oh gosh, hot it outside. It was awful. <laughs> you people do not know the struggle of living in Florida on the first day of summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. It's muggy. It's humid. Good it's thing been is, raining is it only gets cooler week. from here. Well, no, August. N- that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. It gets The days get shorter from here. It's, that's actually true. Okay, that is true. That is truth. <laughs> but yeah, August August is like hell on earth here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, I think that the only other point that I wanted, it kind of goes a little bit off topic, but I wanted to talk about it because it's been something on my heart a little bit and I wanted to kind of include it in this is mm-hmm. we've, I've told you about how a topic that has been talked about a lot among side B circles lately is the whole thing of when side B people go side A. Mm-hmm. And obviously this has been something on my heart lately. Well, but first, like for the people that are kind of newer to this, can you explain like the difference between Yeah, so side B and when side I talk a? about side B and side A, obviously side B is the understanding that I'm going to live celibate or in a heterosexual marriage or in a celibate partnership of some kind, um, because I believe that mar- sex is reserved for marriage between a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. So I'm gay, I'm open, or or same-sex attracted, you know, whatever language Mm -hmm. they use, but um, they've decided to live celibate because of that. Side A is the belief that God blesses, like, sexual expression within gay marriage. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, you know, there's times where, I mean, I was side A for -hmm. a period and then became side B. and But then there's also a lot of times when side B people will move to side A. Mm -hmm. And it's always hard when friends, you know, move from side side B to side A. I'm and the reason why I'm bringing this up for people who might not understand why is because lately I have had multiple friends who have moved from side B mm-hmm. to side A. And so this was actually something that I'd been processing during Revoice and after Revoice, kind of like, you know, it's always sad because you feel like there's these people that they're still going to be your friends, side B side A doesn't change things, but mm-hmm. it changes the dynamics of your friendship yeah. and it makes you feel for many side B people it'll make you feel vulnerable. Mm-hmm. because it's like, can my position change? You yeah. Know? Because at times it's tempting. You know, I feel like I've really gotten into a place where I'm really happy with where I'm at. Mm-hmm. So I ha- I totally understand the whole thing of like going through the doubts and, and of your position and all of that. But I've really gotten to a place where I'm, I'm really happy with my position. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't have this doubt of becoming side A. At least I haven't for a while. I'll put it that way. Let's just put it that way. I haven't for a while. <laughs> it's yeah. been a long time. It's been a while since that's happened. And I think just because I've, I've become more solidified in my understanding. And I've yeah. been kind of really processing since some of my friends have gone side A recently. What has brought me to this place where I I don't I don't really doubt my position anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might try to... F- I'm figuring it's out... It's like that fortitude. Yeah. It's that fortitude of like, okay... 
I get like I'm like I get that you need to come to this position. Like I ain't moving that way. Mm-hmm. Now I I I kind of wrestle sometimes with how do I live within my position? Yeah. Like what is my living circumstance going to be? And that's why you know our conversation on community and belonging has been huge for me. I th- I just wanted to bring this up because it was interesting in the last conference that I went to last week. Uh, one of the pastors said something, and it just really got me thinking about the question of why do I hold to what I hold? Mm-hmm. And not only just about like side B ethics, but why am I Christian? Like what keeps me Christian? What keeps me side B? Yeah. Because I feel like many times that's a question that we as side B people don't always ask ourselves because we're many times afraid to ask it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think it's just side B people. I think anyone. Well, and that, I mean, that is a tough question. Like, especially if you don't have like the understanding or if you don't have like if you're not strong Mm -hmm. and in what you believe or if you haven't done like the research behind it or whatever i feel like that's just hard in general i mean it's just like even when you're a christian and you start going to those things of let me start looking into why do i believe that god exists why do i believe jesus is lord those questions are scary Mm -hmm. because there's a possibility that you could come to a conclusion other than the one you hold exactly it's like it challenges your very core, exactly. like your very belief system. Exactly. But I think it's actually challenging those questions that has made me solidified. Because yeah. I went through a period where I said, you know what, I'm going to approach this whole question. And then it wasn't only that, but then I was looking at, I, I think it was really interesting to see, like, why do I hold this? Mm-hmm. And really getting to that question of, is it just for people? Because if it's for people, they're going to fail me. Yeah. You know? Is it just because I'm told that I'm supposed to do this? Like I've been told by Christians that I'm supposed to hold this. Right. And there's, there are people that do that. Like that's, they hold their position just because that's what they've like been told that they're supposed to do. Right. But I really feel that for me, getting to that place of understanding that I'm not side B because people tell me to be so. Mm -hmm. I'm not side B because of fear of hell. Mm -hmm. That's not why I'm side B. Mm -hmm. I'm not side B because of the community. Though I love, I love my side B community. They're (laughs) amazing. And every single one of my side B queers is amazing. Um, I mean, I can attest to that after going to Revoice. They're so sweet. They're great. Every person, like we, you know what? There's, there's drama in our groups. We, I love them. Well, they're gay. Of course we're going to have drama. (laughs) Um, But I love it all. And it was just a whole thing of, God reconfirming to me. Mm-hmm. And I guess this is just something that I worked through like post revoice mm-hmm. that God's really been solidifying me. It's something that I think I knew at my core was mm-hmm. why. And it all really came down to me was just only reason I can give is just for love of Jesus. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, at first it was not a decision I would have liked. liked. And that's <laughs> yes. the ironic part of it. Yeah. You know, if any of you have heard the episode that I wrote, like that we did, you know that I didn't choose side B because I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Sign me up. I mean, you constantly fight God. Yeah, I and do constantly like fight God. Like your story is just a story of fighting God and kind of just reaching a point where you're like, okay, but I love Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of that whole thing of God forming in your heart and and bringing you to a place of contentment of of the things that you never thought that you would be content with. Yeah. And actually finding that, you know what, I actually like I actually like this better than what I had. Yeah. Which sounds ridiculous. Yes. (laughs) But I think that those are the ways that I see God working is, is being able to take something that originally I hated and I originally felt that God had pushed on me and then through walking with him and through going through that process, coming to a place of, of just being like, you know what? Like I see the beauty in it now. Yeah. And it's for, it's for that fact that now I see the beauty in it. Now I see what God was leading me here for all along that I can actually say, yeah, I would choose this now. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense to people who are on the outside who haven't right. who haven't come to that place. Yeah. I think that's I think that's very true for a lot of Christians in general. Just like no matter what your story is, like for me personally, I've been single for the last 6 years. I haven't had a boyfriend, haven't like gone on dates, nothing. But that was something that I kind of just had this boyfriend where it was just the wrong relationship and coming out of it, I realized how toxic it was and how much I had compromised my faith and then kind of just realized that I needed Jesus and that I loved Jesus and that that was very important for me. And then 
But, like, growing up, I never wanted to be single this long. I was like, singleness is, like, the devil's thing. Devil's playground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 but it's, like, that's something that I would have never picked for myself. But then looking back on on the back end of it is, like, the last six years, I think, have been the years that I've grown the most and they've been the most beautiful because I've also learned the beauty of friendship and community outside of outside of relationships. And mm. and so I think um, just kind of finding that, that grounding and finding that ability to recognize like my ultimate goal is I love Jesus. I think that's a very strong, a strong thing, especially like, like in your life too. Yeah. Yeah, no. And that, I guess that's, I wanted to share that, especially like, because I know that's something that all side B people go through. Yeah. And, and I know that it was hard for me because many times you feel like you're the only one going through it. Uh, I guess with all of this, I just really wanted to do this to first of all, encourage you guys to first of all, read Michelle's post. I think it was great. I think it's just an encouragement. It was an encouragement for me to be able to know that, you know, sometimes when you have those people in your life that you kind of wonder, you know, I, I don't think they're ever going to understand. And then sometimes, you know, first of all, it's just a matter of walking through and, and then people have experiences like what you had experienced and not that you didn't understand or weren't loving before, but you, right. your eyes were open, you know, like yeah. have a new way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so encouraging that I wanted you to share it here. And related to what kind of God has been showing to me since Revoice, I just wanted to, you know, put that on process, whether your side be, you know, processing through that. Why, why do I? follow what I follow. And if you're just, just as a Christian in general, I think it's always important to ask that. Why am I Christian? Yeah. Why do I believe what I believe? And it's the very asking of those questions that many times can help us solidify to understand this is why. Yeah. You know, or if my, if my reasonings are wrong, then I need to work on that reasoning. Right. And I think that's really what's very powerful about uh, following Jesus in general is just like God will always always prove himself faithful. Exactly. And I think a lot of the reasons why we don't ask those tough questions is because we're afraid that mm. it's going to that it's going to end up being a lie. But in reality, God's not afraid of our questions. He mm -hmm. created us. He knows our minds. He knows the questions that he has and he's not afraid of those questions. In fact, he welcomes those questions and and that's really what solidifies our faith is when we ask those questions because we're literally breaking down what we believe and rebuilding it stronger than it was before and so i think like from like just a christian perspective i would say ask those tough questions mm -hmm. because like you never know you could end up like finding something really extremely beautiful mm -hmm. from asking those questions mm -hmm. and especially to ask those questions and and have people walk alongside you yes you know especially maybe people who've already walked through those and not just to copy their answers but it's always good to walk through those kind of things mm -hmm. with other people. Yeah, and people that are constantly pointing you back to Jesus. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. For joining. Thanks for inviting me to Revoice. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Because it was fun. It was awesome. Our side B&B &B was amazing. Uh, I know. I miss <laughs> them all. All of you in, that were in our side B&B, &B, I miss you all. Me You're too. And everyone else at the <laughs> conference. Believe me, all of you all. I, there was so little time to be able to connect with everyone I wanted to. I know. I wanted more time with people. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, so thank you all again. Uh, be listening on Wednesday for the next episode where we're going to talk to Lisa, uh, Dean's wife, about her experience in mixed orientation marriage. Ooh, so be looking for that in two days. Fun. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.